Jason, I've been waiting for this my whole life. Oh, Barbie, I don't know. It just feels so wrong. I don't know if I can do this. Oh, but Jason, I want you so bad. Um, okay, Barbie, that's good by me. No, oh, I didn't, I didn't hear you come in, even though I'm outside. So you're thinking one of two things. You're either thinking, who the hell is this guy? Or you're thinking, Jason, why TF are you talking about a bunch of stupid old Barbie games? And you're on the internet, you're watching me, I'm sure you're aware that in a couple of months a Barbie movie is going to come out, and I'm sure you've seen this image macro all over the goddamn internet, and, you know, I figure I might as well strike. Well, there's cultural relevancy, plus I was looking at PS1 ISOs, and I saw that there are not one, not two, not three, not four, but five! Five of them! That's right. Five Barbie games on the PlayStation 1, and... Is there anything easier to dunk on? Can I think of better cannon fodder for just making some stupid jokes and just roasting some crappy fucking games than some dumb old Barbie stuff? That, in my female viewer demographic, is in the freaking toilet right now. Chicks don't watch my videos, so I need to do a better job of going after that market. So here is me appealing directly to you, I guess. Let me know if it worked. First up is Barbie Race and Ride. Barbie plus horses? A match made in heaven. What could go wrong? Oh, do you catch this? The color Barbie pink is trademarked, apparently. Oh dear. Look at this awful 1999 PS1 CG. Hi, I'm Barbie. Hi, Barbie. Here's a running theme with all these Barbie games. She loves breaking the fourth wall by literally speaking directly to the player. Use the directional buttons to move around the screen. Use the left and right directional buttons to spin the disc to From show here, the you can start you a new game. game. How many games can you think of that start with the main character going, Hi, I'm Solid Snake, and welcome to Shadow Moses Island. Never. That's how often. So we pick our horse, choose a name from a predetermined list, Moonbeam. Then pick where we want to go. Then there's this weird looking FMV loading screen. It's going on for kind of a long time. Oh, well, hold on. Wait, wait a second. I'm controlling this horse. Look, see, it's going back and forth. This, this isn't a loading screen. This is the game. I don't even need to say anything. Once in a while, you need to veer left or right. But what you're seeing is it. This is Barbie Race and Ride. Press the right directional button. I mean, it advertises horseback riding, and uh, I guess that's what you get. The developers knew they couldn't get away with just this, so every so often you're given the option to stop riding to play a mini game, which barely qualify as acceptable to include in a retail video game. Really? Putting together a six-piece jigsaw puzzle? That's your idea of content? Here's one where you need to catch nuts falling out of trees. This feels like the kind of thing you'd play on Barbie.com in 2001. Not something you would go to a store and buy. There's also a racing minigame, hence the race in Race and Ride, but I'm not sure how it's supposed to work. All I can do is jump, and I guess Barbie will always win as long as you don't forget to jump over these little twigs in the path. This whole package is pathetic. The horseback riding only exists as a way to link these stupid flash games together. Barbie Race and Ride is what you call a scam. Let's try to put the pieces of the puzzle back together. You sell to little girls this low effort piece of garbage with the light veneer of a promise to ride horses with Barbie. It probably took about one month to develop, if that. Then they crapped it into stores, and it probably actually did pretty well. I'm angry that Mattel, that RuneCraft, got away with this. If I were five and a girl, I would probably give up on video games forever after this. That was awesome. Cool! Aren't they beautiful? Next up is Barbie Gotta Have Games, which was released as late as 2003. At least this one is honest about being a low-effort minigame compilation. Instead of all that FMV horse riding bollocks, it's just a static menu where you pick which one you want to play. There's slightly more to these minigames than the ones in Race and Ride, mostly because they just ripped off other games like Snake or Connect 4. 
Here's one that's literally just a memory matching game. You know, like that card segment in Mario 3. Another one is just guess the word. Here's a list of letters. You can pick any letter you want. You need to figure out what this word is which apparently I suck at. Another one is just Puzzle Bobble. I don't know how copying Puzzle Bobble is legal. There are thousands of this exact game. In fact, I'm gonna guess that you didn't even know what this was called until I just said it. But you've definitely seen it before. I'm pretty sure you can't just recreate something like Tetris, for example, and then try to sell it as your own. So what makes this concept immune? Hmm, I wonder. One small complaint I have is that many of these games require a second player. So if you're a lonely loser like me, you need to play against the CPU. Barbie Gotta Have Games is still low effort garbage designed to trick parents into buying their daughters shitty games. But for some reason I'm a lot less mad at it. Because the bait isn't anywhere near as good. As stupid as it sounds, Barbie Horse Racing is a game that makes itself. A game that sells itself. Just throw together some dopey racing game, slap Barbie, slap some horses into it, then bada bing bada boom you've got yourself a video game but race and ride didn't even rise up to that level with barbie's got games you know what you're going to get and i don't feel slighted <laughs> moving on to barbie super sports Music kind of goes hard. There's some big sports competition, and because there's nothing she can't do, may as well enter. The Barbie narrating everything trope is taken to a whole other level here. She talks over everything. Press the X button. Player one. To, to choose me. To choose me. To, cho to choose. To choose me. Barbie. Of course I'm going to pick her. I'm going to pick Barbie. Who the hell wants to play as these knockoffs like Christy or Teresa? Yo, check out this CG water fountain. Now that's what I call high tech. So this is the third title I've looked at. And believe it or not, this is the first, and spoilers for the rest of the video, the only game where you can actually dress Barbie up. And even then, there aren't many options. Only eight tops, bottoms, and skates, and four of them are all the exact same color? If you're brainstorming ideas for a Barbie video game, wouldn't dressing her up be the absolute first thing you think of? And it would be so easy to implement too! Hell, Barbie Race and Ride is mostly in first person, so they wouldn't even need to change her character model. Just put a JPEG in the corner of what she would look like. Instead of wasting development time with, I don't know, the Nut Game? Why not put in a character customizer? How is such an easy idea not taken advantage of? If you're a seven-year-old little girl, what do you want to do with Barbie? You want to dress them up, right? Isn't that the whole point? From an ease of implementation to enjoyment had by the target audience standpoint, putting a crappy little dress-up minigame is such a no-brainer. Why did these games not do that? Well, at least it's in one, even if it is kind of half-assed. You're given a choice between two sports, roller skating or snowboarding. Choose which cool sport you press the e press the e press the press the e press the press the X button. Skating is actually pretty cool. Reminds me of 720 or Skate or Die. There's one central mess around area surrounded by three individual skate challenges you have to pass before a fourth and final one opens up where you win the big skate competition or something. Oh, right. There's a downhill sprint to the end, one where you just need to find these tickets in a little maze, and a horizontally oriented one with vert ramps and grind rails to do tricks off of. We're a great team. Then the final area is a little mix of all three. You're great! Yeah! Yeah, we run it! I beat the whole skate segment in 36 minutes, and... I'm not recommending it to anyone who's watching this, but as far as entertainment for incredibly young children goes, you could do a lot worse. Such as the other two Barbie games, they're a lot worse. There's way less to the snowboarding, you just kind of continuously go downhill attempting to run into things, and Barbie does all the tricks on her own if you go anywhere near the half pipe. Again, the music goes way harder than it has any right to though. It's also a little racing part. Yeah, you're going down, Kira. Super sports rule. Yeah, who's the man, Kira? In your face! Yeah, that was so cool. Okay, that's enough of that. Next up is Barbie Explorer. Ooh, we have Indiana Jane Barbie. 
Oh, I'm into this already. Just from the opening cutscene, this looks cool. Here I am in the game, and does this remind you of anything? Crash Bandicoot, perhaps? It looks like the exact same game. Even the font is similar. The sound effects are hilarious. Before I even get into this, I'll commend them for actually trying for once. This is what you call a video game. A highly derivative one, but a real game nonetheless. So this is Crash Bandicoot, only with way less enemies. It's more of a pure platformer. Even has the side-scrolling bits. Something you'll notice instantly is that Barbie moves with too much momentum for this type of game. Like you'll be running a direction, then when you want to go any other way, there's a little delay between when you press the button and when Barbie actually moves. I like how at the end of stages she talks to me. Congratulations, you completed the level. Like, yeah, baby, I know it. I did a good job. Love how you can tell she didn't record that sentence as one take. Kind of. Like, if I spoke like this. As you play through the game, you'll realize that they really only had one or two tricks that they just repeat ad nauseum. A switch puzzle here, a music puzzle there. These switches are real bastards, too. It looks like I'm sucking, but you need to be real hyper-specific where you're standing, or else Barbie doesn't do anything. It's like there's one magic spot, and only when you're there, will Barbie actually decide to pull the lever. Which sounds like a petty thing to complain about, but most of these activate platforms which are timed. So if you need to hit more than one switch at a time to jump on more than one platform, it could be trouble. Love how when you get to the end of a boss stage, instead of a fight, they just kind of run away. You're trying to tell me that this Yeti is afraid of little old Barbie? What a big coward. Barbie Explorer, you're not going to believe me when I say this, is one of the most hardcore video games I have ever played. I am not exaggerating when I say that this game is way too fucking hard. You see that? You go, you go right through the platforms. Like half the time, you're jumping and you just fall right through. Come on, work with me, girl. Fuck. The problem is that Barbie does not have the tools for a precision platformer. Imagine having to play through Crash 1. Only you're not controlling Crash, you're playing as Tommy Pickles from the Rugrats game. Like seriously, go download this ISO. See for yourself, just so I don't sound like a fucking crazy person. You can get as many as 20 lives if you pick easy, but that's still not nearly enough. You play this, you either give up or you abuse save states. Here's an example of some fuckery that just isn't apparent on video. When you turn around and jump, Barbie does this little turnaround animation. Like if you want to go from right to left, Barbie will do this little turnaround animation with frames of her pointing in like each direction. If you hit jump at any point during this animation before she is fully turned around, she goes flying in the complete wrong direction. Look at this, I'm going from right to left. I'm hitting right, now I'm hitting left, and I jump. At no point do I hit down in this equation. There is no part of this process where I hit the down button, yet she's still jumping towards the screen. You don't ever get used to this. God help you if you need to aim your jump anywhere other than the four cardinal directions, because it's also a fucking Castlevania jump. You need to be facing in the correct direction before you leap. Like, look at this lily pad part. How easy does this look? It seems like you should just be able to go from one to the next to the next. But I, I can't line up the jumps and it's time too. If you stand on the lily pad too long, it falls. Cause it looks so easy, but it isn't. Like, why can't I just jump across there? It's just a little simple platforming. If this were Crash Bandicoot, Crash Bandicoot could go right over there. Look at this part. Look at these bullshit leaps of faith. You can't even see where you're going. Worst part is, is I know you're not gonna believe me. You are not going to believe me when I say that this game is hard. It is impossible to understate how exact you need to be with your controller inputs in order just to get Barbie to do the most basic jump. You need to be already moving in a direction or she just goes straight up, which again, sounds easy, but she can't jump from a standstill. She just goes straight up, go forward. FOR THE LOVE OF GOD, GO FORWARD! This is what Barbie Explorer turns me into. Why does this take a dozen save states? She just needs to jump in a straight line and I can't do it! I can't imagine playing through this legitimately. You fall through platforms way too much. 
the power-ups actually make the game harder like the spring shoes which make your already awful jump arc even less predictable in the stages they're so long at least three or four times longer than necessary it took me four and a half hours to beat this stupid game and there's only 12 stages good lord this is a game for six-year-old girls Ugh. No six-year-old got through this. I refuse to believe it. Seriously, I encourage everyone to seek out this stupid game and try and beat it for yourself. The worst part though, the worst part of this whole thing is I googled around to see if anybody else was having as much trouble as I was with this. And on Game Facts, they have this little difficulty rating and it puts it between easy and just right. Do I suck that bad? This game is impossible! Ah! Alright, well, before I wear out my voice completely, let's move on to our final title. Detective Barbie The Mystery Cruise. I'll be honest, this game has been on my radar for a while, and I've been looking for an excuse to play it. Detective Barbie is the reason this video exists. This whole thing has been a thinly veiled excuse to indulge my curiosity for Detective fucking Barbie. Another piece of artwork has been stolen from the art gallery on board. That's three pieces now that have disappeared without a trace. It starts with Barbie narrating how to control her game. Use the directional buttons to move around the screen. If you want to look at the crime computer, press the select button. Something that I'm used to by now because all of the other ones do that, but it's extra awkward here because you can see Barbie staring off into space, speaking to seemingly nobody. To pick up a clue, walk up to it and press the X button. If you want to talk to someone, walk up to them and press the X button. Is that Ken? Is this supposed to be Ken? That's what Ken's supposed to look like? I thought he was like a tan surfer dude, not some geek-haired little bitch. Hey Ken, could you stay here in the gallery and keep an eye on the remaining artwork? I sure can, Barbie. I'll keep my eye out for anyone acting suspiciously. Thanks, Ken. We'll check in with you later. Yeah, Ken, your job is to stand right here to keep an eye on the art exhibit, even though the art was already stolen, so there's no goddamn point. Also, this back here is the art exhibit, isn't it? How are you supposed to keep an eye on it with your back turned? All right, Ken. You wait here like the little worthless boy toy you are and do nothing. Will I, the magnificent Barbie, go off and do all the work? First thing that grinds my gears is the control. Like this is me pressing up and this is down. She moves like it's an old isometric style game. For some reason, Barbie is operating on Qbert controls where up moves her up and to the left and everything is unnecessarily shifted 45 degrees. You get used to it quickly, so it's not really a major complaint, but why, why would they do that? There's no run button. It has fixed camera angles like in Resident Evil. Only every time you change said camera angles, the game has to load. Not for a long time or anything, only for a few seconds each, but it adds up. You walk a few steps, and then it has to load. Then you go into a room, and it has to load again. It just gets annoying. And there's a fade to the trademarked Barbie pink every single time. Exploring the ship, we're introduced to our suspects. Ken, who's too small a bitch to steal anything. No one will try to steal anything else while I'm here. Becky, Barbie's wheelchair-bound friend. You know me, Barbie. I won't quit until we've solved this mystery. Teresa, who follows you around, she's the chick on Barbie's boat at the beginning. I highly doubt that this game would have the criminal be one of Barbie's mainstay friends, so they're all out. Then we meet Julian Jones, who is one of the most irritating voices in video game history. If only I had the money, I could pay someone to write new songs for me. What do you think about all the recent thefts from the ship's art gallery? Well, I'm an entertainer. Not a detective. He seems pretty sketchy to me. Almost too much so. In these types of games, is it ever who you suspect the most? Rosie, an employee on the ship who's going to college to study journalism. Do you have any theories about who the thief is? I've thought about it a lot, and I think that someone on board the ship is behind the theft. Oh no shit, Rosie. It was somebody on board? You don't say. Who the hell else would it have been? Vivian Steed, a retired actress. Can we ask you a few questions about the missing artwork? Oh yes, I know all about that. <laughs> oh, how exciting. She seems innocent. 
too innocent. Hmm. And the captain, Edward Smith. I can't understand why anyone would want to steal from my exhibition, and on my last cruise as well. I don't know what I'm going to do when I retire. I wish there was a way I could take something with me. Oh, it was him. Calling it right now. Book it. Cuff him up. Case closed. You go into all these rooms for the passengers to sleep in, most of which are completely empty. Or at least that's what Barbie says. It doesn't look like anyone's using this cabin. I don't know, Barbie. I mean, there's a magazine lying on the bed. Maybe a clue that someone is, in fact, using this room. But what do I know? I'm not a detective. This must be the pool area. We can leave the ship by using the steps. Wait, what? Who's talking about leaving the ship? To go jet skiing. Jet skiing? Barbie, we have work to do. That's right, even in this detective game, the devs couldn't resist loading it up with superfluous minigames. You can play shuffleboard, go paragliding, jet ski, and my favorite, picking up all the dirty liquor bottles from the bottom of the ocean. They're complete non sequiturs. We should probably get back to our detective work. We can race again when the case is closed. Yeah, you said it, Barbie. Let's get back to work. Unfortunately, you don't actually do any real detective work. The point of the game is to collect six fingerprints from different objects scattered throughout the game. Then you plug them all into your computer, and it spits out who the culprit was. No intuition, no actual thought required. You just find six objects, and the game tells you who it was. Basically, it's just an Easter egg hunt. You take out your x-ray lipstick to search everything you come across for prints. Then they reveal themselves, like a clue in Blue's Clues. Because it's not as if literally every object on board wouldn't have fingerprints. Whatever. These are all baby games. Everything I've said in this video is pointless. Who cares? So I found all the fingerprints, and it was... Vivian? Always the one you least suspect, I suppose. Alright, let's get her. Oh shit, she's trying to get away. Vivian, get back here! Oh my god, the jet skiing? You gotta chase her on jet skis? It comes back? Awesome! Then you paraglide after her? The minigames come back? Oh my god, that's awesome! You won't get away this time, Vivian Steve. Wait. Wait, huh? In the CG cutscene, that's supposed to be her? Doesn't look anything like her. Your disguise doesn't fool us. We already know it's you, Vivian Steed. That disguise doesn't fool us, huh, Barbie? Oh, okay. Okay! I get it. They did the CG that way because the computer spits out a different character every time. It's completely random who the thief was, which almost sounds cool. Like you get a different mystery every time. But it doesn't change how any of the rest of the game shakes out. Everyone still has the same dialogue, and you're still always going to find the same six fingerprints in the same place. Another mystery solved. And as a reward, we were given the chance to stay on board and relax. <laughs> At least until the next case. So those were the PlayStation Barbie games. Some good. Actually, wait, no, none of them were good. I take that back. Some legitimate scams and some tolerable, at least ironic level entertainment. Anyway, that's all I got. Shout out to the patrons. Shout out to William Robert Lee. Never trust anyone who needs a haircut. Goodbye.